Okay, and welcome to another edition of Kraken Cryptic. This time we're going to look at Sudoku again. I'm going to look at the super fiendish from today's edition of the Times. So it's just loading up now. Hopefully, yeah, there we go. Um, so, uh, as usual, what we're going to do is we're going to make notes in the grid where a number can only go in one of two spaces in a particular 3x3 three three box, we do with these little pencil lines as you can see here. Um, and we'll see hopefully later on why this method is very helpful uh, in terms of how to, to get a handle on these puzzles and to crack them efficiently. Um, so what I'll do at the start is to make some of these pencil marks where I'm seeing that there's an opportunity to do so. Okay, so there's our first interesting set of pencil marks. You can see now I've locked a 1 and an 8 into two cells in this 3x3 box. So nothing else can now go in the bottom line here. And I need to use this fact immediately. So I'm now looking at the 2 here in particular because I can see that the 2, whereas before it could have gone in either of these two cells, it can now only go in one of these two cells, so I'm now able to make a pencil mark here, and that enables me to make pencil marks in this cell, uh, in this 3x3 box too. Um, how let's carry on, see what else we can see. Six is there. Oh, and our first number, we can put a five in here. Sevens in down here. Six is here. And you can also note in this central line here, we need to place a one, two, and a three in this central line. It already has six numbers in it, so it's a good place to to just check whether or not any of these these three cells I'm highlighting here are restricted. You can see that 2 is actually restricted in two of the positions, so this cell here has to be a 2, um, which allows us to immediately fill this 2 down in the bottom, this bottom 3x3 three three box. So we know this cell is a 1 or a 3, and this cell is a 1 or a 3. But remember, these pencil marks that we're making here don't allow me to actually um, write those in, because the, we'd be sort of using the pencil marks for two different types of, of marking there. And I don't recommend that. That's the way to uh, madness, basically. It's very hard to keep track of which pencil marks mean, mean which things. Okay, you can see this 3287 here, and this 1-3 combination in this top 3x3 three three box. That allows us to look at these four cells here as containing the numbers 2, 8 and 7. So it's relatively restricting this box already and you can see if we just scan down we already have a 2 and a 7 down here so we're able to place a 2 in this position and we're able to place pencil marks for a 7 in these two positions here. Uh, means we can place pencil marks here and here and here and here. And here's our first, I suppose, more advanced bit of logic, although it's not actually going to be immediately helpful. But you can see here that we have two sevens in rows eight and nine in this position, and two sevens in rows eight and nine in this position. Now, it should be pretty clear that whichever way round these sevens go, there'll either be a seven here and here, or there'll be a seven here and here. So there definitely won't be a 7 in this position here, or in either of these positions either, but, but there definitely cannot be a 7 here. If there was a 7 here, there would be two 7s in row 9, which is impossible. So we know that the 7 in row 7 is going in one of these three positions. Now often, you'd then scan up and find you know 7s up here that you could then use to either write in a big number or certainly make a pencil mark. We can't do that on this occasion, um, but 
definitely look out for these sorts of patterns when you're using this sort of pencil mark technique because these come up all the time and they're incredibly useful um, for making progress. You can see there's a four coming down here and a four coming across here. So I'm actually now able to put a four in one of these two positions. And again, this is going to be extremely helpful. So now, all of a sudden, I've got a two and a four and a two and a four. Therefore, this cannot be a seven anymore. This has to be a seven. This has to be a seven. Let's remove the seven from here. Four, four, this has to be a four. Here. You can see the only numbers now left to go into this uh, box are 3, 6 and 9. Somewhat surprisingly, um, we can't actually make any additional pencil marks in this 3x3 three three box. 3, 6 and 9 again. In here, this time we're able to make a couple of pencil marks. This 3 allows us to go put a 3s in here like this, which in turn allows us to make these pencil marks here like this. And now the puzzle reaches the tipping point once we notice that this 3x3 three three box here and this 3 and 9 here. So scanning down you can see I'm able to make pencil marks in these two positions here. So there's a 3 and a 9 in these positions. Now that has a number of consequences. Firstly it allows me to conclude that this cell has to be a 7 because we still have to place a 7 in this 3x3 three three box and it's now this is now the only place it can go. So let's do that. We can put a 7 here. That allows us to make a couple of pencil marks. Let's, let's be slow and careful about what we're doing. Secondly, because this 7's here, that means this cell has to be a 6. So let's fill that in. That's now a 6. Now you can see immediately scanning across that forces this to be a 6, which forces this to be a 3, which forces this to be a 9. So we've now completely uh, filled this, this row, obviously. And we can make a number of additional pencil marks as a result of this. Uh, let's try and fill them in relatively uh, slowly and clearly so we don't miss any. You can see this 9 here is now forcing this to be a 9 which in turn allows me to place this 3 over here. You can now see actually I'm able to place pencil marks 3's over here like this and identify another double over here which is um, also quite useful. I can now place the three in the central box of the whole puzzle and a three into this position. This cell here now can only be a six I think. Still need to find a six into this one. Let's put the six in. This has to be a nine. You can see these have to be 1 and 5 in some order. So let's put those pencil marks in. And this 3 is checking this 3 here, so this has to be a 3. Let's remove another pencil mark there. Looking at this column here, we still need to place a 4 in this column. The only place it can go is here. Forces the 2 to be in the top position. And this central box is now filled basically. Here. So it's to be an 8. And you can see that I think the puzzle uh, is, is solved now. There is um, there's not going to be any other clever steps. Once you get to this sort of position in one of these puzzles, um, uh, the rest of it tends to fall apart fairly quickly. This has to be a 5 now, this has to be a 1. This has to place 1s over here. So 
So 1, 7, 8, and 9 still need to be placed. Over here you can see that the 8 has to be over this side. There's a variety of ways to finish the puzzle now. It's, uh, it has to be a 5. So we need to place 4, 7, and 9 into the cells. Let's see if there's only one way to do that now because we have so much information in the grid already. And we need to place a 7 and a 9 to these two cells, and that's going to resolve all of the remaining questions about where things go. And that's how you do one of these super fiendish puzzles. Um, so, a quick run through today. Did it fairly slowly at the start to show how the pencil marks build up um, but we'll do more of these videos over the next few weeks and i hope they're helpful to your own solving of these puzzles <laughs>